Hey guys, Scott here, and I just picked up some stuff in the mail. Essentially, I already cracked one of them open. You guys can see it on the screen, basically. I got my limited run packages, uh, the regular standard editions of Shantae and Risky's Revenge, the director's cut. Literally, I just snagged both of these. Let me show you how these look inside. These are new ones that came out. Um, there's that. Comes with a little thing. This actually looks like a Game Boy manual. I don't have any Game Boy manuals to compare to, but it's literally the exact same size as the original Game Boy manual. And it's kind of cool because they did the old Game Boy font type color callback to the very expensive game on the Game Boy. And it's kind of cool. It goes over your basic Game Boy controls and controls control things, I don't know. Has some of the old kind of art. Little sketches in there. It's kind of nice. The inside of this case, the inside art looks pretty cool. Looks kind of vintage. And painted or sketched together with a colored pencil and photograph. I have not opened this one up. Um, they also got me two cards, which it's going to be kind of hard to see because they're foil, but they have a normal limited run background thing on there, but kind of cool to have on the Nintendo Switch. Again, I mean, you know, it's a variety content channel, so because you guys are like that type of thing, um, go ahead and hit that uh, like button. You know, and follow me on other social medias real quick before I open up the next one. They really put like a really good seal on these. There we go. Now, in case you guys are wondering, Shantae is actually a really good platforming series. There's the inside of that one. I already have the other one inside there. Has Shantae, you know, on the beach and stuff like that. Back of it. Sorry, I got carried away looking at the back. And then we have the manual here. It's all in full color. That's kind of nice to use a new art style they used for Half Genie Hero on this. In the 8-bit style that they had. For the graphics for the characters. Little notes and stuff. It's the same size as the other manual, but you know, this one folds out like a or uh, this this one folds out like a Game Boy one. And then this one is just a little flip thing on the other side. That's kinda cool. So Without further ado, we're going to take a look at Shantae, the Switch port that was released onto the Nintendo Switch. I already showed you all the goodies that came with it, and I figured it would be fun to take a look at this real quick. After all, I went to run, finally did a release of this, and the only way you could have gotten this in the past was to spin. Either you got lucky and saw for like clearance or something over at you know Walmart or Target or Kmart back in the day or you know wherever you picked up games in the dollar bin because unless you want to spend thousands of dollars now it's going to cost you a bit of an arm and a leg so here's the menu we got the original Game Boy Color port and the Game Boy Advance port that's cool there's some extras here some credits check out the extras real quick okay so we got the Game Boy logo right there ooh and they're going into some concept art right there nice nice map of the town I guess the areas you get to go to and then there's like the colored pencil sketch that they did off of that it's not too different Sprite work. 
and level design. Nice. This, you can totally cheat in some areas. Alrighty, so we're going to check out the Game Boy Advance version of this. This game was originally released just on the Game Boy Color, though. I don't know too much if you put in a Game Boy Advance. Maybe it had enhanced graphics. I don't know. Maybe not. It was a late game, so... I don't really know anything about it because... I think this might be just a limited run type thing because the Game Boy Advance was released later on and, you know... Now, looks like... We just got the two basic colors of it. That's it. Okay. So, basic classic Shantae intro right here. You know, she leaves her house. What, but this is like the first game that set everything up. And... You just kind of just have to run. Ow. It seems you get a fair amount of lives. So that's good. But it literally does look like the like an old classic 16-bit kind of game. In case you guys are wondering why this game was so expensive again, I'm not sure if I mentioned it already. Um, late Game Boy Color release, people skipped over because the Game Boy Advance was out. And the advertising for this game was basically non-existent. Like everyone was pushing for Pokemon or something else. I mean, that's what Nintendo was pushing for. So we didn't really get to see any of that. Here's Risky Boots. One of the main antagonists of the actual franchise now. But in this, she was just a big villain in this thing. And this is one of those games, though, that you just kind of... You know, play it on the way to school or something like that back in the day. Ow. Get out of here, you. That! Nah, I straight up ran from that. I think straight up still hit me in the head. And I died. But it does skip me to different parts of it. You whip your hair and that's how you get to run. You whip your hair and you hold it. Oh, and he kept the night cycle. That's good. Keep in mind, I'm not the greatest at this game. So I'm probably not going to get far. But... It does have this weird day and night cycle, that's cool. Ah, oh, and then we got this Mega Man thing. Ooh, health. We got this Mega Man jump sequence going on here. Now, I've played this game in the past, but I've never gotten this far. Obviously, I played it by emulation. 
So I kind of know where I'm going, but not really. Because, you know, I dabble around with it for five minutes because it's on emulation and just put it back down. And that was only because Half Genie Hero came out and I got hooked on that one because I was itching for a good platformer besides Mario. And that's how I got hooked onto the series. I just didn't dream of playing it because, you know, it was expensive. In fact, right now, it is stupid expensive because everything's been kind of inflated because of... I don't know why. Uh, everyone wants something at home to play or whatnot, and many collectors want this game. And it's kind of a collector's marketplace at the moment. Now at least I'll be able to play this version of the game years to come. Because it's actually here. I always fall for that. I always rush into stuff. What's wrong with me? Now keep in mind, this is like just the first stage of the game. And it's already further than I ever got. <laughs> So there's Rescue Boots, and here is what looks like to be the first boss. And I gotta try to blow up this engine. First one's like that, and I messed up. But I can stay right here and just start smacking it. Get out of the way. I'll just wait patiently for him to come back around so I can smack him. Or is he just gonna hand, or is, yeah, he just wants to hang out right there until I jump. Okay, so I blew up the door there, okay. Nice, got one left. I beat the first boss, cool. Can I actually save? I don't know.
That's interesting. It actually has a little story, too. It's pretty in-depth for a Game Boy Color game. Oh snap, there is save. There is saves. What? Okay. Dance parlor. Item shop. Save room. There we go. So it looks like there's items you can buy too. That's that's really in depth for a So yeah, that's about it. Um Essentially they they actually made the game physical again, which is great. And it's great for collectors because then they could say, like me, I could say, hey, I physically own all the Shantae games. I literally do. I have them all on the Switch, so I don't have to worry about any type of issue. And I also have Half Genie Hero on my Wii U. So I can say I actually own all the Shantae games now. It's kind of cool. And I also got Risker's Revenge 2 with this, which would be exciting to try out. Eh, it's even a little shiny. Game Boy Color only thing right there. That's cool. Just says limited run though. Um, see? No, you can't see. Now you can. So yeah, I mean this this is fun. That's awesome. I and mean, I could actually play through every single one that came out in the order that they're supposed to come out now. And that makes me really happy. Now I don't have to pay like a thousand dollars for a Game Boy Color game. Mega still played on the go and in on a handheld, in a sense. So yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you guys later. I might uh. I might actually stream this because Sony's kind of pissed me off a lot lately with other stuff that went on. That and some Five Nights at Freddy's. Like, I want to stick to my Switch stuff right now because I don't know how long my PS4 is going to last before it sea bombs. And that's going to suck. And I got I really want to wait for Sony to do something to fix that, which I honestly think either they will, and if they don't, they're going to piss off half their fan base and they're going to lose a lot of revenue. Except the scalpers. Anyway, guys, I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching.